it's nothing crazy. You know, you will fail in e-commerce. It's like, crazy to me how many people don't don't do this. Any average person can do it. That's honestly the beauty of it. All right, what's poppin' YouTube? I'm here with my boy, Colin Johnson. Let's go, guys. And today, this is gonna be an extremely valuable video, straight up, so make sure you stick around. I'm gonna be interviewing Colin and his story with e-commerce and dropshipping, and he's gonna be dropping some insanely insightful tips for all of you guys on how you can progress your e-commerce career, or if you're a complete beginner, how you can get started today. So on this channel, you guys typically hear a lot about strictly my experience with e-commerce and my come up, but I do wanna announce that this is my third video for the podcast slash interview series, where I'm gonna be bringing on a bunch of special guests such as Colin right here to help drop their stories and helpful information for you guys looking to get started. All right, so Colin, let's go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Colin Johnson. I've been uh, great buddies with Nathan since high school. Uh, grew up together playing soccer with them. Um, so known him for a super long time, been best buds ever since. And, uh, you know, been in the e-com game for three to four years now, a little over three years. Um, found a lot of success in it, also a lot of hardships and a lot of failures that uh, also come with the game. But, you know, that's just kind of how it is in yeah. business life. All right, so first off, if you've heard that dropshipping on TikTok is taking the world by storm, you'd be correct. And I'm here right now with this man, absolute wizard on TikTok ads. Why don't you show your dashboard for the day? All right, so here's the dashboard from uh, yesterday. As you can see, we did four and a half grand yesterday on this new brand, just started this month. Yeah, this one's going going pretty good. Um, solely TikTok ads as well. No, haven't dove into any Facebook, Snapchat, Pinterest, none of that yet. This is a solely TikTok ads brand as of, uh, as of right now. All right, so I think we can both agree that the most important parts of dropshipping comes down to the product itself the creative or the video ads that you run for the product using paid advertising, the actual landing page and the high converting copyright and your sales offer and process. And lastly, the backend and fulfillment. So pretty much everything else, the systems and automation stuff that you have in place uh, behind the business. So I figured it'd be the most valuable uh, for my audience if you know we talked about a few of your tips in each of these high converting or super important areas uh, of dropshipping and e-commerce. So why don't we get started with the product, uh, what does it take for you, you know, when you're searching for the next product that you should sell? I mean, primarily with TikTok ads, but also with Facebook and other methods. Uh, what are you typically looking out for when it comes down to these products? So when it comes to product research, all of my products and almost every single product that I've found to be a winner ever has had one of two main factors to them. It's had either a wow factor or a problem solving aspect to it. So now like, what do I mean by a wow factor? I mean, something cool, something people haven't seen before. Um, you know, some, something that, you know, the person can't walk to the local Walmart and find in their local store. You know, something innovative, creative, something new, right? Like, uh, for instance, a great product that blew up was the Sunset Lamp, right? Like, that thing was cool. No one has ever seen that, that thing before. And, you know, it was, seemed exclusive to that brand. It made it look like, you know, if you dropshipped that product, that you were the creator of that product. You branded that product, you brought this to the market, and you were the innovator and creator for that. So that's one thing that I look for in all my products. The, the second thing is problem solving. Now that one's pretty self-explanatory, but essentially, what does your product do? What, what pain point does it solve for the customer? You know, like, why, why, would, why would it entice the customer to buy something from you, right? Well, it saves a major pain point in their life. Now, those types of products, you've probably seen them have been, you know, like neck massagers or something like that because, you know, it's a problem that, you know, $50, if someone could solve, is worth it to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it, it's a no-brainer for yeah, them to buy. It, so. it, makes their, it makes their life better as a whole. And, and when, when something does that, especially in a major pain point area of someone's life, uh, they don't mind spending money on it, right? It's, a, it's an investment for them. Sure. So those are the two main things that I, I look for in products and also the third kind of thing um, that I also look for is, you know, just saturation, right? Is everyone and their mom drop shipping this yeah. product, uh, right? You don't really want to sell something that has already been super saturated, everyone's ran into the ground, capitalize as much as they can off of it. Um, and, uh, and then that kind of goes back to the wow factor when I said it's something new, innovative, mm -hmm. cool. Um, Right, so you don't really want to sell a product that people have already, you know, branded. It's in Walmart now. It's all over Amazon. But yeah, it's also important to realize that you know you will pretty much never be the only person unless you obviously create your own product. 
Um, but in dropshipping, you will never really be the only person selling the product. That's another kind yeah. of important thing to realize. Um, there will always be Amazon listings of your product. Uh, there will always be you know other dropshippers selling your product, but it's just a matter of how many, right? Like, is there pages on pages of Amazon Prime listings for your product, or is you know there's a couple that aren't on there, right? Um, so that's kind of what I look for in um, in a product. I also look at you know when I'm selecting a product initially. I look at, you know, how can I market this product? How can I, you know, showcase what this really does in a video? Is it easily showcaseable or, you know, is it like a little more difficult? Like how can I actually show the life improvement throughout a 15 second or 10 second TikTok video? Can you really do that with the product? Yeah, that's kind of kind of what I look for, look for when it comes to product selection. Essentially just to reiterate, wow factor, problem solving, how many people are selling it. If it ticks, you know, one of those boxes, um, you know, then it, I'd say it's worth the test. And if it's not too saturated. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. If it's not too saturated, if everyone and their mom isn't selling this product, um, definitely worth a test if it ticks. If it has a wow factor, has a problem solving aspect to it, I'd say worth the test for sure. Sweet. For the people watching, if they could use, you know, one method, what's your go-to method for finding products right now? And preferably something that, you know, doesn't cost an arm and a leg as well. Yeah, you know, there's a bunch of product research tools I'm sure you guys have heard everyone talk about, PP Ads Mania. Those are cool and all, but you know, use the ads that you, you look at, you get on your feed. I, I think that's one of the most underrated things. Formulate your ads that you get for dropship. Say you're scrolling through Instagram, see a moon lamp pop up on your, on your feed as an ad, right? Obviously a dropshipping product or you know, a product that you've seen before. Um, click on that ad, add it to cart, go to checkout, fill out your information and then just bail on it. And then you'll continuously get drop shipping related ads. And you know, I've found some of my best products from actually seeing an ad and being like, holy crap, I've never seen this thing before. You know, I'm, I'm gonna check it out, do, do a bit of due diligence on it, then say, hey, you know what? This is a good product, I'm gonna move in on it. So I think that's a super underrated free method of um, finding products. And also something that you've talked about a lot is you know, reaching out to suppliers, asking them what's selling, because the end of the day, they do know best on what's yeah. selling. They work with drop shippers all the time. So I think that was uh, some major value that you dropped in one of your most recent videos. Sure. Awesome. So yeah, as far as products go, I think that that pretty much covers all the bases. Uh, let's get into the next most important piece, which is going to be the landing page, the website, kind of how you how you brand your uh, your store to the um, to the customers and to the world. Uh, what are your tips uh, with that? With you know, obviously, we're both kind of on the same page. Uh, we've talked about this before with building a brand for the long term and we always kind of have that in the back of our head um, when we are setting up a store and a product um, but what are your best tips for kind of building that landing page and your offer and just the website in general honestly i think like a lot of people try and overcomplicate their website nowadays they put all these pop-ups these little spinny wheels on it every single option that they can honestly like keep it simple Go look at you know Lululemon's website. Look at Gymshark's website. They're keeping it super simple. They're not having a whole essay on their yeah. product description. Obviously, you need enough, and it's obviously dependent on the product that you're selling. Like if your product does something, like you know, solves some sort of problem, then you kind of need to describe how it solves that problem. But you know, you don't need to write a whole essay and put scientific discoveries and stuff like that on your product page. You know, keep keep it simple. You know, have mm -hmm. have your main points. What it is, I, I outline my my product pages all exactly the same. Been doing it for the past two years, all exactly this method. Lay out all my points, so like all the bullet points of what your product does, how what pain points it solves. Um, then you know a guarantee, your guarantee, your thirty day guarantee, money back, whatever, whatever you want to offer. Um, then you know point one, image slash gif, showing it. Point two, image slash gif, low blur. Point three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the very bottom, obviously you wanna have reviews, social proof and all that. You know, you could mess around with countdown timers, you could mess around with, you know, stock scarcity, those sort of things. But I'd say just do do one, pick pick yeah. one of those. Don't have everything on your product <laughs> page because it just looks a little Definitely silly. Definitely a mistake that I made from uh, when I first started dropshipping. Um, but if you think about it, like we're a bit biased now because we're so heavily involved in, in digital marketing, but you know, even before we were involved in dropshipping, 
we knew like we went on a website and if we would see all that crap pop-ups and 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 urgency timers and and countdowns and whatever Mm -hmm. we knew right away that this is a little bit scammy it's not professional like you look at a website like apple how clean and how branded they are there's no pop-ups coming in your face with the timer saying you have to buy it in less than a minute like (laughs) you know you really got just gotta make your brand stand out don't don't be like everyone else like don't have all these (laughs) random pop-ups and random stuff showing up all over your all over your page all right sweet so Colin over here just dropped some very valuable information when it comes to the website itself uh, but now the next aspect of course is the video creatives and the advertisements so when it comes to that side and the marketing aspect uh, what are your top you know few tips and, and insight that you could give to in this case let's say somebody who is starting for the first time so they don't have a ton of money and you know access to uh, huge studios and stuff like that Honestly, you have two ways of going about creating advertisements for your product. You know, you have one that's a little bit of like a gray hat way, and then you know you have you have the other method. So I'm gonna go with the you know honest, good, good boy method first, and that you know that's ordering the product straight to your house. Go on Amazon, hit up your AliExpress supplier, do whatever you have to do to get the product to your house as fast as possible. You have your product in your house, then you film videos yourself. Grab the product, film some videos your house yourself in the comfort of your own home or wherever wherever you want. Now the other way obviously is to, you know, go online, find some videos of your product, right? It could even be like, you know, branded version of your product, something like that. Um, Download these videos, bring them into an editor. Now the worst thing that you can do is take this video, download it and throw it right into your ads because TikTok will realize that due to, you know, metadata and all that. And they'll basically blacklist your ad account. You'll get super high CPMs, which is, you know, how much you're paying for a thousand impressions. So you definitely don't want to do that, but just go into any video editor that you have, free one on your on your iPhone, CapCut, easily download that, and get like five of these videos that you found on TikTok showcasing this product, and you know, make your own ad. Bring all these videos into the video editor, take clips from each of them, and you can make your own ad by doing that 100% free without even having to order the product. You can honestly do it in like five, 10 minutes. You can make an ad just like that. And you know, you can make it exactly how you want. You put the text to speech, whatever you want, the sound, whatever you want. It's pretty much, you're remaking the ad. Now you are stealing content technically. And um, you know, I would stay away if you are gonna do this method. I would not do it on verified creators because you never know the team behind them, but try to find smaller videos that didn't, didn't blow up and you can take those clips for sure and use them in your own advertisements. Awesome, and then would you say after that point, if you know somebody were to use this method and they were starting to get some sort of results and they're reaching profitability with their product, what would be the next step in their creative advertising journey? Like, should they just continue chopping up clips or should they start to you know really film the content themselves or start to hire people to film similar content or what's that kind of next step in the journey there? So, I mean, that's just for testing. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't scale a ripped creative because honestly, you could get into trouble for that. But just, just for testing, that's a great, great cheap way. You don't have to spend a penny. You can do it super quick like this. Um, but yeah, eventually what you want to do is you definitely want to recreate that creative. So, you know, find the creative that worked the best out of ripping all these creatives and putting them together. Find the creative that worked the best. Recreate it yourself. Now, you know, if you're, if you're a dude selling a woman's, woman's hair product, obviously you can't do that. So, you know, reach out to micro-influencers. That's honestly the best way. Honestly, honestly I don't mess with any of these... Um, you know, media media companies that make ads for you. I personally don't like them. Um, I, I don't know. Per, like, I think I could just do a lot better yourself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, essentially, just recreate the video that performed the best. Literally, send send the ripped video over to a micro influencer. You know, tell them, hey, recreate this video for me. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these people do it for fifty bucks, fifty American plus the product whatever, yeah. and they'll get you a perfectly good video. You don't need a famous person to make you a video because you don't care about the shout out. You just want the video itself so you can run the ads. Micro influencers haven't realized their own value in their content creation if they're good at creating content versus you know celebrities and people with like 50, 100, 200K plus on Instagram. They're all charging an arm and a leg for this content mm-hmm. because they understand their value. They've been doing it for a while. A lot of people hit them up constantly for promotions and such yeah. but micro influencers you know 10k and less if they're making good content they don't know their value yet because right. not a lot of people reach out to them because they don't have a high number of followers and so like you said i think there's a huge window of opportunity even still 
uh, with micro influencers for you know everything from organic to paid advertising and and I, this is something I talk about on my uh, channel and other videos as well. You want to find those people who have like you know three thousand followers but are grinding like they they know how to create content. Mm -hmm. They're posting TikToks every single day, reels every single day. Um, I mean, ideally, what you do is you go on TikTok, look up your product, and find someone who made a good video, just reviewing the product, and then reach out to that person. They already have the product yeah. in, in their hand because they made a video for it. So you don't even need to spend that time sending them yeah. the product itself, and you don't even need to spend that extra money either. You can literally just find that person, grab them, shoot them a DM on Instagram. I always say, you know, you work with a media company and you know you want to work with them and you know have them as one of your influencers, blah blah blah, and then get them to do a video for you and you know you have a creative that's original to yeah. you. You have all rights for it and um, fifty bucks. Yeah, and if you wanted to spend no money at all, you could probably even tell them like, you know, we're just going to do a trial run for the first video or two. Yeah, right? and then if exactly. we like it, we're going to buy more. 100%. So you know they might even send some content over for free, especially like you said, if they already have the product. Why not? It doesn't hurt them to send over a free video in exchange for potentially doing a lot more and getting mm -hmm. paid. All right, so we've talked about the product, uh, the last component, and you know arguably uh, one that doesn't get as much attention as it deserves. You know, it's not the sexy part of e-com, so no one's going to talk about it. But it's kind of that back end uh, fulfillment, the systems, the automation, having everything in place. Um, you know, just how important is that and what are the first steps uh, that somebody looking to get started with dropshipping needs to take in order to have all these things in place before they go willy-nilly scaling stores and running ads and, and all of this? What, what needs to happen on the back end? Definitely, you need a private agent. You know, you do so, it's super easy. Like everyone, I get so many DMs every single day asking, how do I get an agent? How do I get an agent? It's literally putting the work Go on to AliExpress, message stores, ask yeah. them if they do drop shipping. It's that's all it is. That's how I found all of my agents. That's how I'm, I'm sure you found yeah, pretty much all of yours. Message a lot of people on AliExpress. You can't expect to get, you know, send out one message and expect it yeah. to be the best supplier in the entire world. But send them out. It's funny, nobody wants to do that work. And I don't know why. It's just one of those things in e-com that no one wants to do. But I remember we grinded that back in the day, like back when we were at uh college uh, last year, we were sending out so many messages and that's what allowed us to kind of build our network of top quality suppliers right now. But nobody like nobody wants to put the effort to make those simple messages, which could potentially, you know, make them a lot of money, keep them, retain a lot more profit. Because if you can get one supplier who's selling you the product for slightly cheaper and has faster shipping, you know, that's going to improve your business by X amount leading to, you know, X amount more revenue, X amount more profit but yet nobody wants to make those those minor little changes. All right, so we've talked about a lot of tips, uh, e-commerce specific and kind of each of the different most important aspects to you know starting and, and launching a successful dropshipping store. Uh, but now let's get into a little bit more, you know, kind of personal stuff that people might want to hear about your journey. Um, and first one, I know what was very important for me before I could find any success in anything was kind of changing my mindset and shifting the way that I looked at different things even in my own personal life, because it all relates. And so did you have, you know, kind of any defining moments um, throughout the past couple of years that uh, allow you to be in the position you are now and kind of take strides towards that um, from within your own head? Was there any kind of big shifts that you made? That's one thing that I think that you can constantly work on no matter where you're at in life, whether you're super successful or, you know, trying to get there, you can always work on your mindset. You know, I was working in a warehouse in high school, right? I was working in a warehouse and, um, you know, I, I thought I had so much potential that, you know, I was going to waste, right? Like, why am I spending my time ripping excess cardboard off of boxes when, you know, I, I like to think I'm a smart guy and, yeah. and I'm capable of so much more. And, but like, the way society is right now is, you know, you need to go through the, the ladder first, you know, you need to graduate high school and you need to get a degree. Then you know, you might be able to use some of that potential and work your way up through a corporate ladder until, you know, you can actually do what you're capable of doing. And, you know, I kind of just thought, why, why would I wait, you know, five, ten years to get there to actually do what I feel like I'm capable of doing when I can just start now and just start my own thing. Um, so that's kind of what led me into e-commerce and social media marketing in the, in the beginning is just because, you know, why am I, I have so much untapped potential. So that was kind of the biggest thing that first got me into the into the entire game in the beginning. And then, you know, 
there's been evolutions to that. You know, I think one of the most important things and what I feel like a lot of people, you know, struggle with in the beginning is they don't believe they can do it personally. They don't think that, you know, they see all these people making money, but they're like, oh, well, they're smarter. Oh, well, they've been doing it for longer. Oh, well, you know, they have more resources than I do. Whatever. And they, they don't think, they don't truly believe deep down that they can actually do what other people are doing. And I think, you know, that's the most important thing. You need to fully believe in yourself before you will be successful. And if you have any sort of doubt, you, you doubt either the business model um, doesn't work. Like there's so many people saying, oh, well, yeah, I tried drop shipping, but I failed one time. And, but that, that's because drop shipping is dead. And I, I, I thought that when I, when I started it. Your past beliefs will, you know, affect what, what, your, what your output's gonna be. Um, you know, if you don't believe it's gonna work, you're not gonna put in 100% effort to make it work, right? Because you already think that it's not gonna work. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the most important things. And, you know, you also gotta realize, like, look around you, look around how many successful people there are in the entire world who are, you know, look how many people have Rolexes, look how many people are driving $100,000 plus cars. There's, like, millions of people doing that out there. So like, why can't you too, right? In fact, I was looking at a study the other day and it was saying that there's now, I think over 70 million people um, worldwide that have accumulated uh, a net worth of over $1 million. So either in assets or, or uh, you know, just cash or whatever. And of, of that amount, so of that 70 million people, let's say uh, 76% of them were self-made. So I think that just goes to show how you know, like you said, you don't need to start with all these resources and all these, you know, the upper hand to everyone else. Although, you know, it is still helpful and you can use it as a launch pad if you have it. Um, but some of the craziest success stories uh, are the people who've came um, from the least. And I know the same can be said uh, about myself where I would watch all these guys on, on YouTube and everything. And I would be like, okay, you know, this guy's driving a Lamborghini at 18, this guy has a multi-million dollar business at 22, and I'm just a couple short years behind them. And I'm like, well, you know, the only real difference that I'm seeing here is this person put in work and they tried. Um, they're not smarter than me, they're not more capable. Um, these guys didn't start off with more money and more access to opportunities than I did. So what's stopping me from, you know, kind of getting to that point as well? Yeah, no, 100%, there's no prerequisite. You don't need a degree, you don't need to, have a certain IQ, you don't need anything like that. It's literally a matter of, are you willing to put in the work or not? Mm -hmm. And you know, like, I think something that really, when, when I first got started, you know, get pissed off, right? Like yeah. human emotion is one of the most like powerful things that, that we have and can drive you towards doing so many things. Like you think about like adrenaline, right? When you have a crazy adrenaline rush, like people are like, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but way stronger than yeah. they are just regular, right? There's stories of like women lifting up cars for their like little kid to get out and, and shit yeah. like that, which is just mind blowing. I know. You come like, up with that strength. You have that in you, you just have to like know how to use it and like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, like get, get pissed off that, you know, all these other people are, are li living your dream life, right? Like, you know, use that, use that emotion and, you know, get behind your computer screen, get, get working for, yeah. for a night. Like I remember, um, like last year I caught COVID and I was stuck in my room for, yeah. for, you know, an entire week and a half. And, um, I figured, all right, well, I'm stuck in this room. I might as well just grind. So I grinded for a week, came out with a six figure brand, Yeah. six, six multi six figure brand, um, e-commerce brand. Um, so it's like, it's, if you put your head down and work, like you can it. all do it. Like you have all the opportunity and everything. You just need to put in the work. And yeah, but the sad reality is with most people is that there's you know two sides to that coin, and people take their misfortune, whether they're locked away in a room or whatever it is, they take that misfortune and they start blaming, and they start blaming other people, and they take that anger towards the other people's successes, and they look at themselves and they're like, you know, I'm never gonna be this person. Uh, this is bullshit and they just have that mentality but you know you're saying you got to come at it from the other side and you got to look at it as you know yes they they have this and they've achieved this um, but I can get there too and I'm gonna start putting in the work now and it's kind of like that that classic um, story where you know you get you find someone and, and you ask them you know why are you an alcoholic and they say oh because my father's an alcoholic and you find someone else and you say um, why aren't you an alcoholic and they say 
because my father's an alcoholic, right? So there's there's two sides of looking at every at, at you know every situation, and it's what you can control is your response, is how you handle it and how you move forward. And yeah, I mean, I think it's just a, a matter of what are you willing to do to you know achieve your goals. How how strong is that desire within you? So yeah, actually, you know, we're two of the only guys within the ecom realm in the space that are currently you know, finishing up our degree. So at university, while also, you know, starting our businesses, we started our businesses back, you know, from in between high school and university, and we've progressed through through schooling. And so most people out there, like 90% of the other people on YouTube and in the space um, will tell you like, yeah, drop out of school and go all into e-commerce. And, and you know, though there's some truth and, and, and that can help, I think we're both kind of, you know, sitting here today as living proof that you can find success with your own business while still, you know, meeting other obligations that you had in your life, whether it's whether it's school or whether it's, you know, certain things going on with your family situation. There at the end of the day, I, I truly believe there's there's no excuse and you can always find a way, especially if you build, you know, the right mindset and good time management skills and stuff like that. And so for you being one of the only other guys who's, you know, coming out with a degree and decided to, you know, finish post secondary education while still starting your own business and making money in the process, obviously there's been you know, drawbacks to that, there's been struggles. Um, what type of insight could you provide for anyone else out there who's looking to do the same, who has other things going on in their life but they still want to succeed? Yeah, I mean, I, I think one, one like, something that, a great comparison that you can make that a lot of people can relate to is, you know, working a job, right? They say, oh, I'm working a full-time job. Um, do I have time to do e-com? Well, you know, you look at school, university, or classes that we take. Yeah. Essentially, that takes... Like a full -time equally job. as much time as a full-time job yeah um now you can still do it um you know yes it may take you longer than other people who you know dropped out of school or don't have to work a job yes it may take you longer but eventually you will get there um if you just put in the work even if it's one hour a day if you just spend one hour a day doing it you know it compounds yeah e-commerce drop shipping it's it's new it can be extremely intimidating for you to get into i remember i was extremely it was extremely intimidating when i first got into it, it took me over a month to build my website learn everything and you know launch my first store it took me over a month just to do the website um and it was extremely intimidating you know you see all these ads you see all these metrics you see all these acronyms ctm ctr you know what am i looking at right here it just looks like a bunch of numbers in a Pretty much like a spreadsheet and you know it's intimidating especially when you know your own skin is in the game if you fail you're, you're losing your own money but you know I think what separates you know everyone from from you know being successful in e-com finding success and those who you know fail and launch a store and then fail and then give up is you know how good of a problem solver are you are you willing to push past these small hurdles throughout the way like you know oh I remember how do I buy a domain for my store? You know, that took me so long. It took me like a few hours to figure out, you know, but how much research are you gonna yeah. do? How many videos are you gonna watch before you know you're gonna find out how to do it? Like at the end of the day, it's not rocket science, right? Like you think about you think about like math class, right? You know, you have a math test coming up next week, you're doing your homework, you study for it, right? You get a question wrong. What, are you just gonna say, all right, well, I got a question wrong, screw it, I'm, I'm just not gonna learn this on the test, screw, screw the test, right? No, you're gonna be like, all right, where did I go wrong? Mm -hmm. You're gonna find where you went wrong, fix it, and then the next time you do a question, you know, you're gonna know where you went wrong and you're gonna know how to do it right. Yeah. It's the exact same thing with econ. And I think you can always, you know, no matter what type of failure or even success you go through, you can always take something away. That's something that I try to do as well with every single time that I fail in a new business model, a new business venture or something. I actually write down uh, on a piece of paper three things that I learned and that I'm going to actively try to do better next time or implement. And I think where people go wrong is not when they fail, it's when they don't fail smart, right? And so to fail smart is to understand exactly what you did wrong. Uh, pick it apart and then realize what the steps that you need to take moving forward are to do it better the next time. You have to know why you failed. So any single time that you go through a failure, I think take a minute, reflect on it, you know, maybe 10 minutes or however long it's going to take, but reflect on it and really absorb and understand 
why that failure happened, right? You're looking for why, and then after you have the why, you can then figure out how to not have that same issue happen to you again. You need to reflect on it, and you also need to reflect on your successes. Why did this go well? Um, that's honestly the game and everything. Yeah. Everything about life, you know, you gotta, you gotta reflect on it. Um, you know, you go, you go up to a girl in the club, she curves you. <laughs> Uh, you know, reflect on it. What what was your pickup line bad? Like, were, were you wearing a bad outfit? Like, what, what was the, what was the deal? Right? Um, you know, you gotta like reflect on, it. and you know, you will fail in e-commerce. Like, I fail multiple stores before one hits. You know, probably like one in five stores will hit. One in ten stores will hit. But you know, that hit will be worth it because yeah. it'll give you you know yeah. a lot of cash. But yeah, like you will fail in e-commerce. Just a matter of you know what you do with those failures, right? All right, so the next thing I wanna ask you that I think will be beneficial for the audience is, you know, going through this process over the past couple of years uh, in your life, especially at such a young age, um, you're only 20 years old, turning 21 this year, uh, how has, you know, making this money and starting these businesses kind of crept up into your personal life? Because I know that it has. Uh, it's the same for me where it, you know, affects certain relationships and, and certain ways that people perceive you and, and look at you and interact with you and kind of how have you navigated uh, life outside of business uh, once you started to see success in business? Yeah, man. Well, on, honestly, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy because like, especially like you, um, you know, we post our results on our, our yeah. stories, you know, we're, we're open with, you know, the amount of income that we make online. <clears throat> and uh, it's crazy because, you know, a lot of our, our peers, our old high school friends are like, holy crap like how are you making this this yeah. amount of money like teach me and everything and you know it's it's definitely like great like i i, I wouldn't just not want to make money mm -hmm. but you know there are some some downsides to it and you know there are some obviously like you might lose relationships like for instance like one of my one of my good friends from high school you know a lot of people look at you a lot differently like mm -hmm. I, I don't know they, like you'll have a lot of people hating on you especially when you try to do something outside of the box like this you have yeah. a lot of people say oh you know it won't work you know um why, why are you spending all your time doing this right um it's not until you actually make some cash that you know people will turn and be like oh congrats congrats yeah. congrats um but yeah it's it's honestly it's it's crazy because i never never would have thought that back when i was in grade seven or you know, growing yeah. up in high school that I'd be doing this. Everyone will tell you it won't work, but if you just believe in yourself that it will work and you just stay persistent, um, trust me, it will work out. Yeah, and also following other people that have already walked the path, yeah. right? Like you don't, yes, you should have this unwavering belief in yourself to be successful with whatever you're going into because that's gonna help you. But I think with me as well, what really, you know, kind of happened for me was I saw all these people in front of me who walk down this exact same path that I'm going on right now. And there's still people ahead of me on this path. And all I'm doing is I'm just following them one by one and trying to continue down this path, right? And, and like you said, people are gonna try to knock you off of the path because 99.9% .9 of people in the world are not on this path. They're on, this, they're on the outside. And so they're gonna try to pull you away from that path. But if you just stay focused on the person in front of you who is also in your lane and you realize, okay, well, they did it, this is how they did it. I'm gonna follow exactly in their footsteps and I'm gonna avoid the traps and pitfalls that they experienced along the way. And I'm gonna, you know, shortcut my way forward. Don't try and recreate the wheel. Like people, you know, a lot more successful, a lot smarter, mm -hmm. have already paved the way yeah. for you to go. All you need to do is recreate it, follow, follow yeah. them, you know. I, I spend one hour every single day learning about e-com, learning about new stuff. Um, and uh, you know, I think that that's I, I attribute that to my my success. Honestly, is like continuously learning, continuously, you know, trying to get better, being being humble, and always realizing that you can learn something from from other people. And yeah, I think that's like one one of the most important things is you know continue learning. Say like you know you can't think that you read one mindset book and be an expert on yeah. mindset now, uh, right? Like you know you gotta got to continuously move, move the ball forward. Yeah, and broaden your perspective on yeah. who you learn from. And, you know, I always say this all the time too, like if you guys want to get a mentor for e-commerce or whatever, you have my uh, education company linked down below, but you don't have to learn from me, right? There's plenty of other people in the space. Um, in fact, you'd benefit from learning from multiple people. So 
Colin actually has his YouTube channel up now and tons of other guys in the space are all, you know, providing the free content and everything that you need to go ahead and start diversifying your knowledge and getting the information that you need to begin. So with that, I think, um, Colin's going to now explain his social medias, what he's currently up to. Uh, we're going to leave those links down below in the description and then wind it off here. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, right now currently doing, focusing a lot more just on behind the scenes, e-com, um, doing, doing just a lot of that sort of stuff, growing brands, growing all that. Um, I put my personal brand on the side for a little bit, but you know, I think, uh, I really do like making making videos and you know uh, doing this sort of stuff and helping people become successful in the industry as well. Um, so I think you know something I am going to start doing is posting more content on YouTube. Um, so if you want to give me a follow, that'd be a, that'd be great. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean there's so much content out there, and um, I think that you guys can learn from. I'm not saying learn from me, I'm not saying learn from you, but you know it's there's so much content out there. There's so many great creators that are giving you content for free. Um, that you know I think that you guys can benefit from yeah thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate all the support lately uh, make sure to check out Colin's Instagram YouTube other social media links we'll have that down below in the description and yeah Colin Johnson everyone great thank you guys thanks for having me Nathan appreciate it peace